Live at NAB Day 3, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast from SiliconAngle.tv, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and John, we have a longtime CUBE alum, Scott Genero, CEO of a cloud provider, Nirvonix, and Scott, we've had you on many, many times, and we've seen a really interesting evolution of your career, and now you're you know, disrupting your old career, if you will, and uh, we're joined here as well by Dan Brackett, who's the CTO of Extreme Reach, a Nirvonix customer. We're going to get the customer perspective, maybe do a little in-depth case study here, John, and uh, we've seen a lot of storage action going on at the yeah, show. I mean, I mean, it's all about disruption in business models specifically, and obviously the enablement of, of lower cost, higher performance environments, whether it's hardware, apps, and now with cloud. Scott, you've been on the Cube going back to 2010 VMworld, or, uh, early on, and uh, been with us. So, Tell us what's going on right now with cloud storage. Obviously, it's, ma it's a major disruptor. You're the CEO of Nirvonix. You're out there talking to customers. You're, you're developing some cool apps. You got some great uh, talent on your team, and you got some big wins recently. What's what's the update uh, with Nirvonix? Well, I think it, is this on? Yeah. So I think a couple things. I mean, first of all, is, is it's interesting because I've been in here so much. It's the evolution of the conversation too, right? Because <laughs> uh, you know, I remember a year and a half ago or a year ago, we were talking about is anyone putting data in the cloud. And, you know, and as I said, people are doing it, they're starting to use it pretty quickly. Um, what we've seen, you know, obviously when we look at our last year is, we saw you know, huge amounts of growth, you know, triple digit growth, year on year type growth. And more importantly, when we look, we just finished our Q1. I mean, we booked more revenue in our Q1 than we did all of last year, and last year was a record year for us, right? So a lot of people putting data in the cloud. Um, our biggest vertical is rich media. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons we like this show so much. Uh, we think what people are trying to do with the cloud you know, type architecture um, makes a lot of sense to use it um, for rich media specifically. Healthcare is another one. But a lot of it's related to video, imaging, you know, that type of data. And of course, backup and archive is still one of our biggest growth areas. Well, one of the things we've been talking about here and the theme of the show is integrating more into the devices, integrating functionality, having the apps obviously power some user behavior. So the idea of box selling has kind of changed. I mean, you ship a box here, and, and someone ships a box here, and you tie it together, and you've got a media solution. In a way, that's happening in the, in the storage business as well, where you know, the big box guys selling hardware are kind of, if they don't go to the cloud, they are not integrating with the environment of choice, which is the cloud. So what's your view on that, and your experience selling against the, the, uh, the EMCs and the HPs or the big box guys like IBM? Well, I think from a, I mean, our largest competitor is convincing people in a traditional customer of moving away from box buy, right? Um, but I will tell you for, you know, newer companies, and this is where I think the, you know, the call it the Fortune 500, 100 type companies are going to have to change. You know, the new companies that are coming out aren't buying boxes. They're using our cloud technology and you're going to hear a little about that. And I think that gives them a huge competitive advantages. Uh, compared to these guys who typically are doing the same legacy type environments. And, you know, and that's a radical difference. And so um, we're having a lot of success uh, in this space. We're growing. Um, you're going to see in the next 60 days some, you know, you think some of the wins we had last year, which were eight petabytes and five petabyte wins, uh, we're going to announce even bigger ones that we've already won that we just haven't announced yet. So uh, with some big, big name companies. So Dan, talk a little bit about uh, Extreme Reach and we'll get into sort of why you went in this direction and what it's meant for your business. But why don't you s set up your company and your role there. Sure, absolutely. Um, so Extreme Reach is the largest advertising distribution network in the world. We have 15,000 media properties, over, over 7,000 TV uh, destinations in our network online, receiving content over the internet, file-based delivery, file-based workflow. Um, we have m several hundred web publishers, ad networks, ad exchanges in our, in our network as well. So we provide an end-to-end -end solution from post-production and the, the production workflow of generating creative out to distribution into, uh, into all these different uh, video properties. So our idea is video everywhere, which is clearly a huge theme here at NAB this year, the, the convergence, the idea of TV, online video. To us, they're one and the same. It's a video advertising message that we want to take across multiple screens and bring with that the, the robust workflows that involve uh, approval of creative, the production process, the talent management, and so forth. Bring all that together and make sure that the distribution of that content is seamless and flawless. And that's where w leveraging cloud technologies has helped us to disrupt that type of a business as well. You got a lot of boxes. We had to, <laughs> we had to displace a lot of boxes. Yeah. So much so like... So you guys pure cloud? 
we are pure cloud. Really? So much like Scott was describing, um, you know, displacing storage boxes, our job on the distribution side has been to displace uh, distribution boxes, catch servers at TV stations, delivering through satellite uh, uplinks and so forth. That's, that's sort of the, the, the way things were done. Previous to that, it was done with tape. Uh, we've taken that to the next level, leveraging cloud technology, uh, storage, distribution, Networks. So real time helps you. So that, so in the guys Absolutely. creating massive amounts of content on the high end or mid range, you can take all that content into your cloud. Uh, is that what you're saying, right? Exactly. And what we're doing is we're taking the original broadcast quality commercial master right out of Final Cut, right of out of it, uploading that directly into our cloud. We do a tr we provide transcoding to any format in the cloud and distribution of customized formats for every destination. So does that, obviously the economics change with cloud. One of the Absolutely. best things about cloud is you, <laughs> you buy as you go, right? You don't have to uh, have a CapEx investment of, you know, you know, $10 million to build out a data center all over the world with CDNs and, and so on. So if you can get that, that changes your economics. So you sell a customer, you get charged by the cloud provider when you have a service. So you're right there, it's pretty lean operation. Are you passing those savings on to your customer exactly, base? Exactly, absolutely. So we've been able to take that savings, that different, fundamentally different business model, and deliver that to our customers in the, in the way of savings, in the way of a greater efficiency. They can take a spot from post-production and have it at a TV network in less than an hour. It's yeah, well the show amazing. here is all about yeah. content transformation. Um, they have, a, uh, I don't know what the slogan is, but basically it's content transformation. Content's everywhere, content's king. Um, and in the news today, the, the Lo London Olympics, Dave, yeah. NBC, NBC announces that they're going to be streaming in every single piece of Olympic coverage. 3,700 so, hours so, of live streaming. And so just think about what that will do to the servers. It's going to basically melt servers. I mean, they're going to have a challenge with, through CDNs, et cetera. So how would you guys fit into that if uh, NBC was your customer? You, would you go to those guys and say, hey, use our cloud? Well, so what we provide is advertising content distribution. So as opposed to the streaming of the actual Olympics and right. so forth, we would come into the play when they're placing the advertisement in that content. So either the ads are being delivered to NBC through the cloud technology, transcoded right to their format that they need, and then they could do the local insertion, or they can be streamed directly through an ad, a video ad serving technology, just like traditional you know, internet okay, video. Okay, so if you were, okay, because you guys have these different business, but if you were uh, to advise NBC, could they use Nirvonix Absolutely. to do this coverage? Scott, what's your, what would your pitch to NBC be? Are they a customer yet? NBC is one of my largest customers. <laughs> okay, so all right, there it is. Uh, NBC Universal. Can you talk, uh, okay, got it. So, but this is an example. And by the way, they have petabytes in our cloud. So, but this is an example. They're going to yeah, be generating so. massive amounts of video from the Olympics. Yep. Um, what's their workflow? And they're going to want to monetize it. How they're would you want to monetize right. it? And, and by the way, the, the, and the key is, which is really a, a sweet spot for the cloud, is, and they're going to want to keep it forever, right? And you can't keep it forever on, you know, tier one storage. And putting it on tape is too cumbersome, so you can't monetize it. So, cloud is a great fit because it, the data is available. You can access it. You can pull it back quickly, um, and be able to monetize it. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And that's what everyone's starting to do. So, so I, I do want an interesting point. Ex Extreme Reach has been a customer of ours now for probably about three years. Right. Um, you know, really in the last couple of years. But they were they were a credit card customer of ours. They went to our website. They bought a terabyte of storage, and today they have hundreds of terabytes. You of storage. swipe the credit card. That's yeah, pre pre funding guys. initial <laughs> prototype <laughs> system. We built our platform using a credit card. So why did you go to Nirvonix and not you know, Amazon, for example? Well, we've gone to multiple providers. Uh -huh. Nirvonix is one of our primary suppliers. We use multiple different cloud providers for both storage as well as uh, CDN technology. So, so we view the cloud as a set of resources that we can leverage, taking core comp and we focus on our core competency. We understand advertising, we understand the workflows, the distribution process, and how to work with agencies, how to work with broadcasters. You know, we don't really want to be specialists in storage, and I've done it before, <laughs> believe me, it's no fun. <laughs> and been so there, we want yeah. We've been there and done <laughs> that. So we want to focus on what we do well as a company and the value that we can bring to our customers and bring in companies like Nirvonix to help us with the infrastructure to make that happen, and it's been a great fit. So you second source the cloud. Absolutely. Uh, offering essentially. Absolutely. And uh, how, do you, uh, do you, how do you create commonality between the processes? Is that something that you have to design in? Is that something that you push Nirvonix to do in your cloud suppliers? That, that's something that we've built into our platform and we, we call it a, we, we affectionately call it a cloud raid because we have normalized our, our APIs into the storage so that we can keep things wherever we need to. We can locate them geographically with a, you know, appropriate proximity to where they will be used. So we've been able to use the cloud as a 
massively distributed storage uh, network and optimize that for specific uses to allow a broadcaster to receive a file from the most optimal location, so it's it, very effective. Is it a hybrid? You get some on-premise and some off, or is it all uh, external? It's 100% in external cloud storage. Our transcoding is hybrid-based, so we have some on-premise. We run multiple data centers around the country, so we have transcoding capacity spread around, pulling content in and out of the cloud, so every master is stored indefinitely. We can generate new formats on the fly for that content for whoever wants to receive it. Okay, so architecturally, you've created commonality. What about yes. sort of business process? Things like SLA, you know, security, how you define incidents. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Amazon, you know, pretty much any color you want as long as it's black. Exactly. You know, Nevonics actually, when you call them, they'll answer the phone, I presume. But Absolutely. So how do you rationalize the sort of differences there? That's a great question, and that really comes to us to work with each SLA appropriately, and what we end up with is, is a common denominator factor. So we right. focus on achieving the right common denominator so that we have a uniform, to our customers, there's a uniform experience, and we take care of managing the back end and, and making sure we've got the right SLAs for each provider. Yeah. And, and the folks and Nervonics have been, been great to work with and, and we're very pleased. I, I, th I think it's an interesting point and I think we're going to start seeing more and more of this, right? Because one of the things we get asked about is, if I put data in your cloud, am I locked in? And the answer is no. And Extreme Rich is a great example where you can use multiple cloud providers. In fact, you know, just like you had multiple storage vendors on the floor, right? Having multiple you know, cloud vendors might make a lot of sense, right? I mean, obviously it keeps us both honest. I mean, we've all been vendors before. We, we kind of know that story, right? Um, but you know, also just like anything, what we, where we see customers using multiple clouds, you know, sometimes they'll put data in our cloud for different SLA requirements than they would for Amazon. Sometimes, to be frank, Amazon's there as a backup in case, you know, heaven forbid something should happen, right? So, but once again, it really shows you that it, the capabilities of being able to not be locked in is very real. And it's probably one of the bigger concerns I hear from customers. Typically, it's not security. It's not, you know, all the things you read about in the press. It's, I don't want to be locked in, right? And so, you know, we're seeing more and more customers being able to implement more like Extreme Rage to show them that you're not locked in, you have choices. And we've got to step up and give you the best service possible um, to make sure we're getting a fair share. Um, but it's, it's real possible. You want to lock them in with yeah. great service. Well, we want to lock, we want, yeah, exactly. Feature and function and uh, service. And we do the same thing with our customers. We don't lock them in. We, we, we give them a great product and we give them stellar service and they're going to decide if they want to keep that or if they want to move somewhere else. So it's the, same, it's the same thing. It's just an entire ecosystem of companies all working under the same, same sort of ground rules. Guys, I think this is a great success story with the fact that you're a startup and credit card, debt funding, now you're scaling, now you're number one in, your, in, a, in, a, in a real cutting edge segment. Scott, you guys are kind of in a similar boat where you guys are a startup that's growing really, really fast, but you're a different kind of startup. You, there's startups out there that are doing cloud storage, but they're like Y Combinator, they got seed funding. Right. You know, they're out there, but they're not, re they're not really providing that kind of level of support because you guys are in the same conversation as IBM, yep. Amazon, Rackspace. So as a startup pioneering kind of this cloud storage model, is that hard for you? Because now you're, you're in a, a big league conversation with the big names, yet you're also growing as fast as a startup. I mean, is, that, is it challenging for you? Is it easy? Is it, how do you communicate your, your message to the market? Yeah, so, I, I, you know, is it, is it difficult? Well, you know, when you're growing at the hyper growth we're growing at, I mean, you know, staying ahead of that curve is, is, is an issue for any company, right? Which, which is a good problem to have, not a bad problem. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, all have their niches they focus in on. Um, and you know, when we go after what we call the enterprise customer, they call it the Fortune 500, Fortune 100, whatever you want, um, you know, our, we do not see those guys competing against us. And I think one of the big reasons, if you remember, you know, we do public, we do hybrids, we do privates, we do it all, right? And that gives us that flexibility to walk into these bigger customers and have a different kind of conversation. None of those guys do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the idea that we can move large amounts of data and archive it on a customer's floor and then move it into our cloud is a huge advantage we have that nobody else, you know, does today. So, um, is it difficult to compete against? When I go into a Web 2.0 customer, it's probably difficult to compete because I see Amazon there a lot, right? Because that's their strength. That's where they do, that's kind of where they started. It's not a lot of file size either, but it's, like to no, run a scaled business with petabytes. It's, it's a development environment, right? It's a development environment, you know, created by developers for developers, and that's kind of where they started. Um, we win there all the time because customers like the fact they get functionality from us that they, didn't, that they don't get from Amazon. Part of it is support and service and some of those other things. Um, but when we talk about traditional customers, you know, the ones that EMC and NetApp are selling to and IBM, 
we don't see Amazon a lot. We don't see Google a lot, and we don't. We definitely don't see Microsoft a lot. Uh, we're we're competing against them buying what I would call a traditional box, and we're convincing them that that model goes away. And it's not just about cheap storage. I mean, listen to the story here around Extreme Reach. You know, I didn't hear him say that. Yeah, the cost structure helps them, but it's the distribution of data and it's accessing data in the locations you need to have it at that's really creating this interesting model that's giving people huge competitive advantages. It's probably one of the biggest things we talk about. Um, I was just at a large university in New Jersey, and uh, we were talking about accessing the data in cloud storage. They have cloud storage today. It's a box sitting on the floor. I said, how, how well are you doing? They go, horrible. It was a CIO. I said, you want to know why it's horrible? Because everybody wants to access data from their iPhone, from their Droid, from their iPad, and they want it to look like an Apple device, a GUI interface that looks that way. What they created looked like a mainframe 1980, Command you know, you know coming to a portal. <laughs> that's, not what co that's not what guys want. Yeah. She showed them our solution, and the feedback was, we could have 100,000 people signed up using this tonight. It's a different methodology, yeah. a different way of looking and at it. And that's the other yeah. mega trend, is the, you, and we've seen this a lot, John, is you're seeing these IT intensive companies f turn into profit <laughs> generators, right? right? Getting out of the sort of managing the storage business, for example. We saw that yeah. at Cerner, we yeah. see that at NYSE, and yeah. at USC is yeah. another example. You guys, are, you guys are getting petabyte customers. I think to me, uh, you know, as we have getting the pressure to break here, but I just want to say that the extreme, extreme Reach is a great example that you're showing there, that that's the kind of scale you have. And Dave and I were pointing about the tape issues. A lot of the media guys use tape because it's easy for them, but I think what you guys have is really compelling and the proof points of the petabyte scale, you can bring that real-time value right. um, and not have to use tape. You can still use tape, but you can give them a really good solution for these broadcasters. So I think, I think you guys are really ahead of the curve. I think uh, you're early and very much pioneering this great solution. So you know, to win petabyte scale from Hollywood studios, from entrepreneurs like this, uh, is really impressive. So Scott, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate oh, thank it. You. Um, we're going to be right back with our next segment right after this break.